This is an SBC Media Partners production. Swung on, hit high and deep. Right Phillies fans, these are your glove stories with Murph. Check out with Greg Murphy. Murphy, you got a special guest, huh? Hi, everyone, and welcome to Glove Stories with Murph, presented by Parks Casino Sportsbook app. It is good to have everyone with us, and uh, we are really excited to have our next guest on the program. He is one of three players in the Phillies organization that has both uh, coached and played in a World Series for the organization. One of three, as we welcome in Milt Thompson to the program. Milt, good to see you, man. How you doing, Murph? Good to see you, too. I'm good. Uh, I assume you know the answer to that trivia question, who the other two are? I believe it's Book. Yes. Uh, And Bo. And Bo, right, right. You can't go. <laughs> Bo and Vuk seem to go together. Yeah. All the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so the three of you, uh, the three of you both uh, played and coached for a World Series team in Philadelphia. That's a that's a pretty prestigious list that uh, you find yourself on, huh? Oh yeah, I tell you what, uh, those two guys, I loved them. You know, they taught us a lot, man. Yeah. And you know, Bo, you know, Bo's high strung, but he really knows what's going on. You know, and then Vuk. He had that black book that, uh, <laughs> you know, he kept with him and knew yes. where to play everybody. I, I kind of laughed at today's game when guys are taking uh, little index cards out of their back pockets <laughs> trying to see what we're, where we're going to play a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vuk had it all all yeah. right there in the palm of his hand and then yes, let you did. guys know about it, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he was a spe- he was a special one for sure. Let's let's go back to the back to the beginning. Uh, Milt Thompson, the young athlete. Um, baseball was not your only sport growing up, right? You you were involved in a lot of different things. Yeah, I played football. Um, I ran indoor track, and I played baseball. So you know, fall fall was football. Winter time, I ran indoor track, and then in the spring and summer, I played baseball. But baseball, I would imagine, uh, was always maybe your first love. I know there's a great story about uh, you back in Little League getting started in the game and uh, right off the bat, a major change in, in the way you went about playing the game, right? Yes, I, uh, I think I'm kind of stubborn to a fault, <laughs> you know, sometimes <laughs> because uh, I, I, you know, idolized Jackie Robinson growing up. Sure. So I, I wanted to play second base. And the first day at Little League, uh, I ran out there and fielded the first ground ball and threw it left-handed. And the coach goes, no, cannot play the infield because you can't turn a double play properly. Went home upset, uh, talking to my dad. He goes, you really want to play second base? I said, yeah. So every day after he got off of work, I just went and uh, played catch with him right-handed so I could play second base. That's amazing. And how long, how quickly were you able to kind of adapt to being able to, to throw right-handed? It took a couple months. Took a couple months, and then, then you know it, it just, I, it's just—it's weird because now I, I kind of throw both ways and batting cracks and stuff, and guys are looking at me like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> when I get up to throw left hand, but yeah, it's uh, it was something where I don't know. I learned a long time ago when someone tells you you can't do something, <laughs> you know, if you really want it, it's going to take a little extra hard work and dedication. But uh, if you want it, you can you can make it happen. Yeah, you know, and that's such a great message. And you, you know, it's it's really it's amazing to think how early in life that you learned that lesson uh, with the help of your dad. You know, kind of figuring it out. If you want something bad enough, figure out how to get it right. And that's exactly what you were able to do. Exactly right. I mean, it's it's so easy today to say I can't do this, I can't yeah. do that. But you know, you know, it took me six years to get to the big leagues, and uh, I went from rookie ball to double a in a year so <laughs> it spent right. three and a half years and spent three and a half years in in double a so <laughs> yeah it was a struggle <laughs> well that's that's a perfect segue because you were drafted uh, out of howard in the second round by the atlanta braves and uh and then yeah you spent some time down in the minor leagues and you know for i, I would imagine six years is if you figured it out is probably about average for guys that do eventually make it to the big leagues maybe some guys get there a little quicker. Some guys, it takes a little longer. What What were the minor leagues like for you? What do you remember uh, about those days? Because the minor leagues can be a grind for a lot of guys. It's a very big grind. I remember uh, first my first year, uh, rookie salary in the minors 
was 500 a month before taxes. <laughs> so you weren't making a lot of money and uh, you had to get a, a job in the off season to, yeah. to, to get by, but it's a, uh, it's a struggle with the long bus rides and, you know, trying to find a place to stay. And it's just, it's very, I think it was six of us in the first house I stayed in. Right. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's a grind. And it, when you get there, you deserve it because you've gone through a lot. <laughs> You know, we, we hear in baseball all the time for the love of the game, the, that statement for the love of the game, and it applies in a lot of different scenarios. But there has to be a love of the game to, to kind of toil in the minor leagues uh, for year after year with that hope, that dream that you make it to the big leagues, but certainly no guarantee, right? No, there's no guarantee. But uh, the thing is that, you know, oh, wow. As long as I, as long as I can remember, I dreamed about, being a, a major league baseball player. Yeah. So that, that kept me going. That kept me gr grinding when I felt kind of low and was ready to give up that, that kept me going because I felt I had the, I had the ability, you know, but I just had to become mentally tough and go through what it takes to, to get there. Anybody that you remember coaching or, or teammate wise in the minor leagues that helped you get mentally tough, get to the place that, uh, they got you to the big leagues eventually? Oh, yeah. Number one is Hank Aaron. Oh. Hank Aaron was our minor league director. He was running the minor leagues yeah, at the sure. time. And uh, he's hard. <laughs> he's really hard. I remember one year I hit 300. I, you know, scored almost 100 runs, and I stole 68 bases. And he sent me a contract the next year for – a $50 a month raise. <laughs> <laughs> Tough game, Mel. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, you know, and, and we had a discussion. And he goes, hey, man, that, nothing was given to me, man. It's tough. I say, Hank, but this is, the, you know, this is the 80s, Hank. We, you know, <laughs> give, me, give me a little bit of a break. But I, I truly love him because he pushed me. I remember, you know, I, we used to have instructional league for after the season was over, sure. the minor league season. And I was playing a game and uh, facing a lefty pretty tough lefty and he threw me a wicked curveball and I kind of flinched and you know I kind of laughed I'm like wow man I got to stay in there on him and after it bat he just grabs me and goes oh you think it's funny to strike out I'm like look let me just say something to you I was caught off guard and the the, the pitch fooled me so I kind of snickered at it but I learned from it that's what I'm trying to tell you but he wasn't he wasn't buying that <laughs> That, that's awesome. You know, there are a few uh, mentors in the in the game of baseball that are better than a, a guy like Hank Aaron. When uh, when you stop to think about being able to, to kind of learn and, and you know be uh, you know tutored by him, that's got to be pretty special for you. Oh, I mean that whole organization back then was unbelievable. We had Luke Apley, mm -hmm. we had Smokey Burgess, okay, we had uh, Cleet Boyer. Uh, Johnny Sane. I mean, this, these are guys that were just tremendous players, you know, and they, they were down there teaching us how to really play the game. And it, it was from my year and the year after me, I think of maybe 10 over 11 of us made it to the big leagues. Wow. And that's you know, saying something. I mean, yeah, it is. you know, there's player <laughs> development and then there's player development and that's what they were doing down there in Atlanta. Oh, most definitely. Yeah. yeah well, you finally get that chance to step onto a major league baseball field, September 4th, 1984. You're with the Braves. You're playing Houston. I probably don't need to give you any of the details because I would imagine you remember that day like it was yesterday. Tell us about it. Uh, it was, well, really the day before was the key. Okay. Um, uh, it was the last game of the season. And uh, I come in and uh, Eddie Haas was the AAA manager. He calls me and he goes, huh. He goes, you had a pretty good year. I, I don't know. I uh, guess you're going to have to pack your bags and go to Atlanta. <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> in shock, you know, to, to, to get that information. I couldn't wait to call my parents and talk to my dad. And it's like, wow, this is a dream come true to actually be able to get to, to the major leagues. And a lot of people don't know my story. You know, I never played in a minor league spring training game. Okay. I was never called up never. to, you know, back up or anything like that. I played in a major league game before I ever played in a major oh, league spring that? training game. How and about that? The thing was, um, that year, Major League Baseball came up with the six-year minor league free agent rule. Okay. And uh, 
they were going to lose me. I was going to be a free agent at the end of the year. So they said, hey, let's call this kid up and give him a <laughs> chance, see what, he, see what he can do since he's been playing well for us in the minors. So, yeah, that was the opportunity. And then, you know, the next day I, I, I was in Richmond. Our AAA team was in Richmond. So I fly to Atlanta and it's like, whew, you get to the ballpark and it's like, there's Dale Murphy, <laughs> there's Bob Horner, <laughs> <Yep. laughs> you know, and Joe, Joe Torrey was our manager, Bob Gibson's the pitching coach. And I'm just sitting wow. there going, Oh my gosh, you know, just yeah. kind of pinch yourself talk to right? the clubhouse guy, John Holland, and, you know, find, find out where my locker is. You know, one of the first things you do when you get there is you have to go to the manager's office, let them know you're there. Thank you for, you know, me being here and I'll yep. do the best I can. And then the clubhouse guy shows you where your locker is. Yeah, and, and you look around at the rest of the lockers, you just yeah. – the nameplates, and you're like, all right, Thompson, right there. That looks pretty good, right, in between all of these guys, right? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, Larry Bradford um, was a big league pitcher, too, and he was down in, in AAA, AAA at the end of the year uh, on a rehab, and he goes, you know what? They put their pants on one leg at a time just like you, and they, if you cut, they're going to bleed red. So just go up there and be yourself and, and, and have a good time. Yeah. Side note, by the way, I think John Holland is still in the Braves clubhouse, if yes. I'm not mistaken. He is the still he in the clubhouse. Is. Yeah, he I is. He, he is. I think he uh, still these, is. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> but uh and and a couple of hits that day. So that you know, you get you get that out of the way. Um do you remember the feeling of of you know that first base hit and and what went through your head when you're standing on first? Oh man, it, it it's really surreal. I I got there, took batting practice and I'm on the bench and Terry Forster is just ribbing me. One thing about <laughs> back then when you're a rookie, oh, you yeah. don't say a word, <laughs> you know, you just wait till someone speaks to you, you know, before you say anything. And he was ribbing me the first couple of innings, you know, wanting to know about you, Hey, you scared? And you know, all this stuff. And then all of a sudden um, they go, it was the fifth inning, bottom of the fifth, we're down and they go, Milt, you're pinch hitting for the pitcher. I'm like, I'm like panic set in and I went, Oh, what's your routine? Okay. Put your batting gloves on, you know, <laughs> go down, find your bat, get your helmet, you know, get you get back into your routine, you know, and got on, got on deck and took my practice swings. And uh, I think it was a two, one count hit a double down left field. And then they did a double switch. So I stayed in the game. So okay. it, it was, it, it was pretty good. And then after that day, I started the rest of the season. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. And they, yeah, they gave you the opportunity to play, which was, which yeah. was awesome. Um, and I would imagine, uh, mom and dad, pretty, pretty excited about all of that. Were they able to be there that day? Or did, no, or they did couldn't you... make it that day. Cause it was such a quick so turnaround. Quick, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, they, they used to come. The great thing about it is in AAA when I was in Richmond, they were there all the time. Right. Getting to see yeah. me play. So it was, you know, it was pretty cool. <laughs> pretty special. Yeah. It's a moment that uh, none of you guys ever forget for, for good reason, for sure. I love hearing the stories about, about that first time, but then you settle in and you're a big leaguer and, and, you know, you spend 13 years in the big leagues and we're going to talk a little bit about that, but you get to Philadelphia uh, and uh, you, you're coming from the Braves organization. You get to Philadelphia and uh, well, you know, the, the team had been in some lean years when when uh, you got there the first time. And mm -hmm. uh, what do you remember about the first time you're with Philadelphia? Because folks might not remember, but you were here in the late '80s. Went back, it went to the Cardinals, and then came back. Do I have that right? You have that correct. Yeah. Um, it was tough because I was replacing a legend here. Who's that? <laughs> Maddox was still a, he was oh. still on the team. Yeah, Gary. Okay. Gary <laughs> was still on the team, but I'm the, the the new guy on the block playing center field. And this was probably the first time in 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 my life that I actually this is your job. Yeah. And I first first off, I put too much pressure on myself early on, and I end up getting sent back to the minors, and I hit like 400 down in the minors and came back up. And I figured it out. Just go play. Don't put the extra pressure on yourself. Just go. Right. You can't force the game. Just, you know, do what you do what you do best, which is hit the ball on the ground and run. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple, this game. It really is, right? And and if it comes to you, catch it. That's that's all we that's ask. Exactly right? right. Yes. 
John Felsky was your manager uh, yes. when you first got here. Yes. And then, uh, and then he moved on and Lee Ilya became the manager uh, for a time. But mm -hmm. what do you remember about those guys? Very different styles, right? Very different styles. Um, I didn't know a lot about Felsky because I'm coming over and he came up from AAA. So I didn't mm -hmm. really know. And he wasn't here very long. No, he was not. Um, okay. But my boy Lee, <laughs> that's a different <laughs> guy right there. You know, Lee is high strung too. And, uh, you know, he, 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 he could, he could, uh, he could blow a gasket every now and then. <laughs> I thought you were going to say he could motivate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I enjoyed him because he told me, it was funny. He goes, man, if I'm ever manager, you're playing for me every day. <laughs> so that, it happened, <laughs> you know? There you go. Yeah. And so, you need yeah. guys like that. You need guys yeah. that, uh, that believe in you like that so that you can, you know, kind of, uh, find your way. And in 87, you had one of your best seasons in in the big leagues and back in 87 did you not oh it was it was unbelievable yeah. um from the was it uh july and august was absolutely incredible i hit over 400 both months and i think it, something came out in 2004 when uh ichiro did it there's only three guys in major league baseball who have done this one happened in the 1800s i don't know the guy's name <laughs> i i did it in 1987 Wow. And Ichiro did it in 2004. And that's hit over 500 in a 50 game span. That's incredible. I oh, mean, the ball must have looked like a beach ball to you. Oh, it was, it was ridiculous. I mean, I was getting at least two a night. I remember I had a, we had a double header against the Dodgers. I went seven for nine. Okay. I mean, that's... Just incredible. I'm like, have a night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. That's a week for some, some month for some, yeah. uh, especially nowadays. But, uh, yeah, it, you know, it's cool to think back. Um, this game is not easy, and it is the, probably the most humbling game uh, that you can play at a professional level. But when you're going well like that, you know, I, I have to believe, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but the game feels pretty easy during that stretch of time, right? It felt, when you're locked in like that, it's, you, you can't even describe it. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. And you better enjoy the ride because the <laughs> that slump is coming. <laughs> Believe yeah. me, people don't understand that. You know, the only way a baseball I, I when I talk to kids all the time, I said, "How's a baseball game move along?" And they're looking at me. I said, "Somebody makes an out." Hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. three outs, half inning. I said, "So you're gonna make outs in this game? It's it's how you handle it. You know, do you, you do you get upset and waste away a whole game?" Uh, one of my things that I, I beat in the kids now, I call it one a day. You used to have one a day vitamins when I was growing up. And I said, it's one a day. I said, you get one and then you get greedy. <laughs> you get right. your extra hits. <laughs> I said, but where that really comes into play is you're coming up for your fourth at bat. Get one. Right. Don't worry about those three to gone. Focus to get the one. Yeah. You know, and, and great advice. Easier said than done for sure. Because mm -hmm. as you said, you know, you get inside your own head and, and you're trying to do too much sometimes, uh, which is a tough way to play baseball for sure. But, mm -hmm. uh, but that philosophy to get one. Yeah. Makes a lot of mm -hmm. sense. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, usually somebody gives, gives you information. And you start thinking that's how a slump comes along. You know, mm -hmm. I think you're stepping out. I think your hands are a little lower. You start thinking about all these other things instead of seeing that baseball coming at you, you know. Right. You <laughs> start looking like Barkley in his golf swing when you're up there. You're, you're trying to do way too much. <laughs> yeah, I get it. All right, let's 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 jump ahead because uh, the magical year of 1993 is, is something that this town of Philadelphia has never forgotten and you know it will never forget and you were such a big part of that you come back to the organization as a free agent uh in 93 they were uh, a last place team the year before uh but you added some new faces a couple a couple of new faces that throughout the course of the season would have major impacts you being one of them uh on this team what do you remember about spring training 93 uh going into that season because you know you guys were picked probably to come in last in the division by most folks. Well, number one, we had nothing to lose. The team who came in last place the year before and <clears throat> with the additions, you know, we all came together it, yeah. and it was, it was unbelievable. And the one thing I can say is we weren't selfish. We had three platoons on that team. That's, That's unheard of. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You had me and Inky in left field. You had Izzy and West in right field and you had Mickey and donkey at second. I know. 
And it's, if you put incredible. combine all our numbers at those positions, pretty good year. <laughs> yeah, all stars <laughs> probably, year. and all, all three probably. You but, know, and, you know we, go ahead. you know we just we just knew our roles. Mm. You know, and we didn't get upset about it. And the great thing about it is we're we're all fresh because we all are playing. Yeah, you know, and you don't get you know August and September get worn out because we were all just interchangeable. So it worked great and then you know all the magic from that year oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> it's just unbelievable it is and we'll, we'll touch on a couple of those moments but uh before I, we we let that point go the idea in the big leagues of uh platooning players you know there can be there can be rifts on the bench there can be upset folks there can be people that are brooding because they they think they could play but I've read this and I've talked to a couple of the guys in those situations, including yourself. There was one guy in that clubhouse, the catcher, Darren Dalton, who made sure that none of that happened, that everybody was on the same page, right? What, what a tremendous guy. What a tremendous leader. He led mostly by example. You didn't want him to get, come get up in your face. That's, right. that's for sure. But I mean, it was just, it was unbelievable. I mean, he controlled, he controlled. Once the game started, he was in control. Yeah, you know, I remember a couple of times uh, he he was putting that fastball down, and the pitcher kept shaking his head, and the pitcher kept shaking his head. He's like, "Oh, time out, <laughs> go out there <laughs> and get his point across." So that, that was the great thing about it, um, man. I, he had a nickname for all of us. You know, he called me Scooter. Scooter, yep. Um, and I, and I say this, it's funny. I said he's the only man that has ever kissed me <laughs> you know that's he kissed was me just too. A, <laughs> you know, and he, i mean he was just a great teammate and a great friend and i miss him dearly i tell you i really miss him dearly yeah i know it, it, to a man when i talk to you guys uh from that team um the, the the sentiment's the same about darren he was he was a wonderful wonderful guy but an incredible leader inside that clubhouse too uh which this team needed for sure. You know, they oh, needed, yeah. they needed somebody to kind of keep you all together. And, uh, and he was the guy, let me ask you about this because there's a, it's, it's documented a, a story about Dave Holland's early in spring training, kind of calling out the pitchers pitchers from the year before oh, about, yeah, yeah. uh, can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because a lot of folks have pointed to that and said, that was a, a moment where pitchers and hitters kind of came together. Yeah. Well, before we get to that story, I got to tell you my first day of Holland. Please story. do. <laughs> um, first day of spring training, we're taking batting practice and uh, he's hitting right before me and he's swinging. And I don't know, I guess he didn't like the way he was hitting. I mean, it's just beginning spring training. You know, <laughs> no big deal to me, you know? So he comes out the cage and he slams his bat down. I'm like, Dave, that's all right, man. We're just getting started. He goes, I'm not Dave. I'm Mikey. I went, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that was your first introduction yeah, to Mikey. That was my first right? introduction to Mikey. But going back to the story, we're, we're uh, in spring training, and we're getting ready to go play the Cardinals. And Dave calls the pitchers. He goes, look, I'm tired of getting hit, and I'm not going to go out there, you know, and, and get in a fight on the mound and lose time on the field. So – you guys better start protecting us, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I, that's all I'm going to say. And so we go and we're, we're playing uh, St. Louis and uh, Donovan Osborne was on the mound and he hit Ricky Jordan. <laughs> and when he came up to hit, I think it was Tommy. I think it was Tommy too. Yeah. yeah Tommy, Tommy said, look, I ain't gonna have Dave Hollins after me. <laughs> he drilled, <laughs> he drilled him right there in spring training just to get the message. Hey, this is how we're going to play. We're not yeah. going to let people bully us. You know, we're going to get and, you back. And bench is cleared in that game. Yes, you know, they sure they, did. Yeah. 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 And uh, I, like I said, I've heard a couple of guys sit point to that moment and say, you know what? That's when we realized we all have each other's back. It's not pitchers mm -hmm. over here and hitters over here. And that it was, it was a, a team of 25 plus and and that that's how you were going to go and approach the season i mean it was it, it it was crazy we we were we were brothers we're family i mean we we went to war every day together i remember we were playing the giants at home and we were down seven nothing i guess it was around the fourth fifth inning mm -hmm. and west was at the plate 
and hit a line drive back to Brian Hickerson. And he snags it, and he turned to our dugout and slammed the ball down. Don't do oh, that. <laughs> he woke us up, man. We came back and won that game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, and, and again, you know, so many – magical moments from that season that being one of them um and and i know you get asked all the time early it was early in the season like i remember like it was yesterday when when you went up and and made the catch uh, over the wall to bring the ball back but that was early it was april 29th of that season uh when you robbed the, the, the it was grand slam you robbed the grand slam talk a little bit about that play well you know it was late in the game and we were up i think by two yeah five three and- i think yep yeah, and um, at that time, you you play no doubles. So that means any ball in the ballpark, you better be able to get to. So I was back a little deeper, which allowed me to be able to get back there and get up and make that catch. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I really didn't play that deep normally, but, you know, the, the, the scoreboard and everything dictates what you have to do. So they had put us in no doubles. So I was back a little deeper and got a great, great break on the ball and just unbelievable. That's, you know, as a child, you, you dream about <laughs> making oh, yeah, a play like that. <laughs> yeah, you do. And, and, you know, it, it won you a game, uh, in that particular, uh, on that particular day, but those kinds of moments, I think about Mariano Duncan and, and, and his big moments, John Crook. Mother's day. Yeah. Yeah. Mother's day. Right. And, and, you know, here I was a, uh, 21 year old guy. I just graduated college, huge fan watching those games and, each and every night, it just seemed like you guys figured out a different way to win ball games and and refused to lose, kind of thing. Yeah, because I remember after the the grand slam, the next day we were playing the Dodgers and they had the bases, lo- of course, with Mitch, they had the bases loaded, and Mickey makes the great snagging the line drive and gets the double play, and we get out of that. So you know, it's funny, you know. Mitch had a way of making things interesting. Yeah, <laughs> but he you know, he I can remember um, uh, Pergosi and Pods. You know, they'd be there, and all of a sudden they disappear down the down the, <laughs> the runway, and you'd see smoke. <laughs> <laughs> they had to go down there and, <laughs> and get a cigarette to calm yeah. themselves down. Calm the nerves. <laughs> well, but yeah, he he always found a way. You know, for mo- for the most part, to get out of it. And you know yeah. that you know. Closers are hard to come by. True, real good closers are hard to come by. Yeah, you know, and 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 Mitch had such an amazing. I mean, you obviously don't get to the World Series without Mitch Williams that season, uh, doing what he did. But um, but you know, and and we all remember how how it ended. But again, to your point, it's a it's a tough tough job. And uh, for the most part, he was he made it interesting, but he was he was really good at it. And you guys needed him for sure. Yes. yes. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about uh, what was your relationship like with uh, Pete and Cavillia? Because he was your platoon partner. Um, were you guys, uh, you know, kind of always helping out one another, kind of, you know, trying to figure things out? Oh, most definitely. My my big thing I used to tell Inky is that don't die for baseball. You, you're too big. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're too big to try, and it's going to take you forever to get up, and the guys will be running all around the bases. I'm like, Inky man you know if you can't catch if you can't stand up and catch it don't die <laughs> you know Pretty so good we, advice. we talk we, we talk we talk a lot and then you know like in the later innings like in the eighth or ninth inning i would go out there for defense when he was when he when he was starting so you know it was it was fine we we had a very good very good relationship um and, and you know we we dig on each other a little bit i said i know you're a home run hitter i said but you know Going out early, hitting balls in the upper deck is not going to help you when the game starts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I said, you know, but, you know, we, we we talk a lot about, you know, I'd help him out as far as positioning and, and where to play guys and stuff. And, uh, yeah, all, all, the, all of us, you know, Izzy and West, and, you know, we all just got along because we knew that it was the right situation. And it was working. And, yeah, <laughs> it yeah. was the right situation, and, and and we just, you know, put our egos aside, you know, and just went out and played. Yeah, and and for Gozi, I know he, he he had Darren in the clubhouse to kind of keep everything in order, but but for Gozi, kind of when he needed to, would jump in and push all the right buttons as well. 
Well, let me just tell you this. The first thing he said, he said, my door is always open, but you might not like what you hear when you come in there. <laughs> I love I'm it. Gonna on, I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you know what? It, it always seems like, and you can always do this in retrospect, but when you look back at the managers that have success with particular teams, they always seem to be the, they were the right guy. And I think Fergozzi was the right guy oh. for you guys in that year. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Yeah. We, our, our, our staff was unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. You had pods, um, uh, you had, uh, Roberts, Mel Roberts, sure. and you had Irish out in the bullpen. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. You had some had characters great, on that coaching. Yeah, we, staff. yeah, we did. Yeah. You did with Book and Bo. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, just to, yeah, put those two on the list. Um, all right, let's uh, jump ahead because it's interesting what you just said when you were talking about Pete and Cavillia. Um, even back in your playing days, you had an eye for, you know, maybe being a coach one day, you know, helping guys out to be the best they can be. You returned to the organization um, as a, a base coach first and then the hitting coach uh, during what is the most successful time in Philly's history. That was a, I know it was a special run for you guys. What, what do you remember most about uh, being with those guys, the Chase Utleys and the Ryan Howards and the Jimmy Rollins of the world? The great thing about it is I had all of them in the minor leagues. Yeah. Before they got to the big leagues. So, you know, even Pat Burrow and Jason Michaels, all those guys came through working with me. So I had a relationship with them. And that's the most important thing. You have to, you have to develop their trust. So when you start giving ideas to them, right. <laughs> they got to kind of trust what you're trying to say, you know, and it's, it, it, you know, probably the, the, the one closest relationship was Jimmy Rollins. I've known him forever. You know, he's like my little son, you know? Yeah. And I remember uh, uh, Ryan Howard, his agent called after we signed him, you know, cause he, he was though like a fourth or fifth rounder and he should have been a first rounder, but he had a like, kind of slow, season that year mm -hmm. and uh he said can you call ryan because ryan went to school with my oldest daughter in st louis when i was okay. there okay all right so i said ryan man let's go he said, i said if you if you're going to be as good as i think you're going to be you're going to make your money so you just need to go ahead and sign and play you know wow that that's interesting and and assuming he did at that point yeah and, and, he and did. Got, yeah and got to the got into the program at that point because you look at a guy like jd drew who didn't sign, waited around, and I don't even know if he got 10 years in. No, I don't think he did. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's remarkable when you stop to think. Uh, those guys, you know, the core group in, in that, uh, that 08 team, you know, some of the best players to ever put on a Phillies uniform. Um, when you sat back and watched, did you know what you were watching at the time? Uh, did you realize that these guys were going to, to, to be as good as, as they uh, turned out to be? Oh, no doubt. I mean, I, I, I marvel at Chase. You know, he, you know, he watches a, a ton of biz, uh, video mm -hmm. and stuff. But I marvel at him because he would give the pitcher a strike. He hardly ever swung at the first pitch. <laughs> and most of the time, these pitchers wouldn't throw a strike. And knowing he wasn't going to swing at it. Right. <laughs> you right. know, I think they were afraid time, of that one time he would. <laughs> and he did. And he did in, uh, in um, uh, when play Tampa Bay, he ambushed. I, don't, I can't remember who it was, but he ambushed the guy in Tampa. Yeah. You know, he, he hardly ever swung at the first pitch, but he just knew he was a great hitter. You know, all those guys. I mean, it, Ryan, Jimmy, you know, it's it was unbelievable to watch yeah. those guys go out and play every day because you knew something something special was going to happen. You know, and, and, you know, we don't hear a whole lot about, you know, certainly the 93 team, we hear so much about the character of the team and, and how much fun you guys had before and after the games and all that. Uh, but that 08 team, you know, you don't hear, it's a different era, so you don't hear as much. But those guys, not only were they there for the work, because those guys put the work in every yeah. day, but they also were a pretty close-knit group that really enjoyed being around one another, did they not? Yes, that's, that's very true. I mean, they spent a lot of time together, you know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, we, even on the road, you know, I'd get invited. We go out with all those guys, you know, yeah. it's just close net guys. They, I think <clears throat> once they got to the playoffs in 2007, mm -hmm. that was their first taste of it. 
And then the following year, Jimmy goes, we are the team to beat. <laughs> they, knew, they knew the mission and they knew what they had to do, not just getting there, but getting there and being ready to dominate, you know, and, and find a way to win. And that's what they did. You know, you look at how it all, how it all played out. You look at um, uh, Brett Myers with that great at bat and then mm -hmm. Shane hitting the grand slam, <laughs> you know, yep. against Milwaukee. You look at Matt Stairs with the big home run off Brock. And then, you know, it's, it's amazing. You know, I, I'll tell a story about Jimmy Rollins, the year he had all the, you know, 20, 20, 20, everything, yep. you know, we were about a month out before the end of the season and he had gotten the twenties at everything, but the triple. And I go, just like your style, you're going to wait till the last day of the season to get a triple. <laughs> and his last at that, he got that. Yes, that he did. Triple. <laughs> I, you're kind of like a soothsayer. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Hey, are you, when you look back at that year, 08 versus the 93 era, I mean, one as a player, one as a coach, uh, one ends in a World Series victory, one ends in a World Series loss, but both very special seasons. Um, so many guys have told me that the, the number one memory they have um, is that parade in 08. Is that is that same for you? Is that the, the most it, it was incredible. It was absolutely incredible. Yeah. And, you know, in 93, if we don't lose that 15 to 14 game, Yes, <laughs> we probably we probably champions, but that yeah, things happen. Yeah. But to get on those floats and go down Broad Street was a memory I will never forget. It was unbelievable. I've never seen that many people in my life following you. And then we get to the link, or it was link then, yep. and it's crowded with 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 people. Act. And yeah. we go in there and, you know, say hi and all. Then we leave and then we come to, to Citizen Bank Park and that's crowded. You get in a convertible and you ride out and you're waving it all. Oh, my gosh. It's it's a memory that uh, I will never forget. Yeah. And, and you know, here we are, what, 14 years later and uh, to, to a man, you guys that were part of that 08 team. Uh, still revered in this town. Uh, you know, you have 93 on your resume, but now you have 2008 on your resume yeah. too. My God, you probably never have to buy a meal in this town. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I, I can't, it, it amazes me that people still remember the catch. Oh, that was 93. I remember, like it was, I, I'm telling you, Mel, I remember watching that and seeing it and jumping out of my skin. I remember it. It was, it was that kind of season. Yeah, it was. It's amazing. I'll go out and say, Hey man, I, you Mel Thompson. Like, oh man, I remember that catch. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. All right, yeah. before we let you go, before I let you go, uh, nowadays you spend a lot of time coaching high school age, college age kids. You, you've been you've been a hitting coach in this South Jersey area for for a long, long time. Uh, in addition to your major league and professional duties, I wonder, you know, any great stories come out of uh of you trying to help some some young folks uh get to where they need to be i mean uh have you had you know i know, I know you've had success with a lot of guys what do you what do you what do you take out of the most out of uh your your coaching after the at the big leagues well my thing is my, my job now is to try to find a way to get a kid a full ride somewhere okay which you is, know, and, which and is huge. His, yeah yes and get yourself started and I try to make it as simple as possible because that's the way my dad made it for me. Just try to make it simple and and just believe in yourself because half of this, well, more than half of this game is confidence and sure is. and believing in yourself. And one of the the things that my dad taught, uh, well, told me all the time, and he was like, "Don't think, don't try. Trust yourself. Trust your ability." And I can remember this. I guess it was my sophomore year. He asked me a simple question. He said, son, can you hit? I said, yeah, dad, I can hit. He goes, if you can hit, why is it every time I come see you play, it looks like you're trying to do something. You're telling me you know how to do. And the light switch went on. I'm like, wow. batting practice, prepare myself for the game. When they say play ball, just play. Let your natural ability play the game. Don't try to force things. Just they're going to walk you, take your walk. <laughs> you know, yep. just be, be patient and look for a good pitch to hit. Yeah. Wow. What great advice that you remember, you know, all these many years later, and now you're passing it on to, to the next generation. 
Well, it's very important. I mean, in today's game, guys have, are are getting so locked into so much information that they just can't go out there and just play. Yeah. I remember my, my last year um, coaching in, in professional baseball was uh, 19. And I, they hired me an assist, a video assistant, was a video assistant and a run production analyst. <laughs> <laughs> and, Wait, what? <laughs> looking at, and we're looking at video and he's telling me what this kid's doing wrong. And I said, OK, how do you fix it? He goes, I don't know. I went, OK. I right. said, do you know that, you know, there's no perfect swings? No, we're no, there's no Ted Williams or Tony Gwynn. <laughs> I said, you take what you have, and if they're successful with it, why are you messing with them? You got to leave them alone, you know? The game will make – I always say the game will make you make the adjustments you need yeah. to make. Yep. And, you know, they talk about, oh, it's a sophomore jinx. No, it's not a sophomore jinx. The other team has made an adjustment, and it's up to you to figure out and, and go back to your strengths and stuff, you know? I tell Ryan Howard all the time, that shift got in his head. Yeah. You yeah. know, that shift no got in his head. I mean, I'm I, every year, even when I had left, I text him, Jimmy and Chester, wish him good luck. But I always tell Ryan, I said, Ryan, Bud, Budweiser, left field is your friend. That big Budweiser <laughs> sign out there. <laughs> I said, left field is your yep. friend. Remember that, you know, even though they're putting that shift on you, left field is your friend. Yeah. That's the that's the guy. I mean, the year he won the MVP, he hit 27 home runs to straight left field. That's incredible. You knew he was going well when he was doing that, for mm-hmm. sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what, Mel? The game uh, needs more coaches like you. It really does because you make it you make it so simple, you know, and, and the game can be simple if you allow it to be. And that's probably when guys have their most success, you know, um, but uh, but hey, look, we appreciate you being with us. It's always good to talk to you. Um, and always great to, to hear the baseball stories. Uh, and I, I know you'll love this game. You can, you can just hear it when you, when you talk about it. Yeah. I mean, I, 43 years in professional baseball and I, I loved every minute of it. And right now I'm just kind of taking it easy, but I'm still around the game. I'm still teaching yep. and, uh, I'll be doing it hopefully for a couple more years. <laughs> Don't ever stop. Don't ever stop. Mill Thompson. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Murph. Glove Stories with Murph is presented by Parks Casino Sportsbook app. New users download an app store or click parkscasino.com slash PA and use the promo code MONEY for first bet risk-free up to $500. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome back to Glove Stories with Murph, presented by Parks Casino Sportsbook app. And it is, once again, time for us to kind of relive one of those great games from 2008, one of the games that got those Phillies to the end of the journey in a World Series championship. And we do so like we do all the time with uh, the manager of that team, Charlie Manuel, who joins us now. Hi, Charlie. How are you? I'm doing good, Murph. How are you today? I'm great. I'm great. And uh, looking forward to reliving this game with you. Uh, I, I would imagine maybe you remember this one maybe a little bit clearer than some other games because it was a holiday. It was July 4th, right, right. 2008, and you were taken on the Mets right. at right. Citizens Bank Park, 44,000-plus in the stands uh, to watch that game. And uh, But let me set it up because you come into the month of July, and the team had been playing, well, not its best baseball. You had lost 9 of 11 to end the month of June. What do you remember about that period? I remember that way right at, right at the end of June. Uh, if you go back and look, like we were doing fine, and all of a sudden we hit that little, uh, we hit that bump in the road, yeah. and see like nothing could, and we were not playing good baseball at that time, and nothing was going right for us. And then we played Atlanta Braves before this series, and we uh, had a good series, and we came back, uh, and uh, we were uh, on the Fourth of July. We were, uh, uh, of course, we were playing playing the Mets. Yep. It half started. I can't re- and I can't remember exactly what was the reason. Uh, you know, like uh, did he start? Whether it was a spot start or whether we had just put him in a rotation or not. I, I, you know, like I don't. I don't recall that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gee, he does get the but start. J hat. Yep. Yeah. 
but I do recall the game. I mean, okay. Uh, All right. Well, let's let's get into it because to your point, you had lost nine of eleven to end the month, but uh, including six in a row. I can imagine Sports Radio at that time and what they were but, saying about about this team. They fire Charlie. Get him out of here. And that's what he's doing. But, um, yeah, but then right. you come into the month of July, still two and a half games up at, uh, in the division, which was good. And and so you're you're up in the division. You sweep out the Braves to your point, and then the Mets come calling. Johan Santana on the right. hill for the Mets, and Jay Happ right. for you guys. So Johan Santana, I mean, one of the better pitchers in baseball at the time. If you remember, he used to pitch good against us. Yeah, I mean, he he, uh, he was a good pitcher at, at at that time. Yes, he was one of the better pitchers in baseball, mm -hmm. and he had great command of his pitches. And then, and usually he kept the game close. And I I remember this day here, you know, like he goes five innings and. Uh, I mean, nothing happened in the, too much in the game to five innings. I do remember uh, the thing that I remember about the game, uh, if I'm not mistaken, you know, uh, Hap uh, would get a, he would get a, maybe get ahead of the hitters, but he had some com a com command problems. And it seemed like all, you look up and he's 3 2 on quite a few hitters yeah. and things like that. And the game kind of moved kind of slow, if I remember. Yeah, yeah, it, it really did. And so, you know, when a guy like Jay Happ is out there and he only made four starts for you in 08, he was terrific in 09, but in 08, he only made those four starts. So I guess at that point as the manager, you're saying to a young guy, look, just keep us in it, keep it, keep us in the game. And then when you're getting tired, we'll get you out of there and get, get in the bullpen, right? That's exactly what I'm thinking. Yes, yes, we are. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking probably at the time. Well, that's exactly what he did because we had no score and we pick up the action in the fifth inning, but Hap does start to get in trouble there. So nothing, nothing, but he allows a single to Damian Easley and a ground rule double by Ramon Castro. And then he walks the next batter to load the bases. He got the pitcher Santana to pop up to the catcher, but then Reyes grounded into a fielder's choice that scored the first run right. and he walked Andy Chavez and he walked David Wright and that scored right. the second run. And you had seen enough at that point. Right, right, exactly. I, you know, like I remember him falling behind an account, and of course, and you're like, and all of a sudden, you know, like uh, at that time, um, I think it, he was he was he was one of our young pitchers, and you know, like, and he had a he uh, to me like one of the downsides to him. He had a tendency once he got ahead of the hitters, you know, like he uh, you look up and he's done he's done he's done got uh, got himself with what I call half two pitches, and and you end right. up walking up. Uh, right in uh, in that inning and we loaded the bases and you know like in uh, I figured that, that more than likely at that time I I don't have the stats in front of me or or the uh, uh, what do you call it the game the, monster, uh, yep. mm -hmm. uh, the pitches and things like that but I would assume that he had accumulated a lot of pitches too. Yeah, I think you're right through the five innings. So at that point, you know, you had such a good bullpen in 08. You said to yourself, all right. Let's let's hand it off. You're able to get out of the inning, but you're trailing. But you finally got something going offensively in the sixth with one out. Jason Worth would single. Then Chase Utley followed him. He singled. Rollins flew out the center field, but then Ryan Howard singled and Pat Burrell single singled, tying up the game at two. And as we've talked about so many times, Charlie, this team just give them a just give them one inning, and and it seems right. like they're, they're able to come right back on. Exactly. I remember we, you know, like we started hanging, hanging, hanging out hits together, and you know, like, and we uh, came right back on them. And yeah. you know, like we we uh, we talk all the time about that was the kind of team we had. You know, like we'd stay right with you, and and a lot of times when we got a chance to hurt you or or, or take uh, uh, you know, like take care of a break that we just got, you know, like things would go our way, we'd come back and get you, and. And we needed it at, at that time. This was, was a huge game for us because the Mets had a good ball club here. They had one of the better teams in the league. And, you know, like for us to be playing, and, and it was important that we win the games, of course. Yeah, and obviously, you know, with the beginning of the season, Jimmy Rollins laying it on the line, saying that you guys right. were the team to beat. It was the Mets he was talking right. to. So, you know, the Mets – and the, it, so it, it meant that much more inside the division. Well – you get out of there, you tie it up at two, and then your bullpen was terrific. Chad Durbin, Ryan Madsen, and then you bring your closer in in a tie game at home, Brad Lidge, uh, and he gets right. the job done as well. Uh, that's a philosophy that, that you followed most of your career. Things are a little different nowadays, but it worked for you for sure in 08. Uh, you're right on. I mean, you got everything exactly right. You know, like uh, we bought uh, Lidge in a tie game, and 
uh, of course, he did a job and gave us a chance, to, you know, like to win it, you know, like in, in, in our bottom of the ninth. Yeah, it's exactly the way you draw it up as a manager. You get Lidge in there, he shuts him down in the top of the ninth, and you pick up the action in the bottom of the ninth. And right away, Ryan Howard and Pat Burrow leading off the inning, strikeout, strikeout. You're thinking to yourself, <laughs> okay, maybe it didn't work. But yeah. with two outs, this team never count them out. Pedro Feliz gets the base hit. And then uh, Shane, and then he gets moved over, and then Shane Victorino comes up, and it seems like he came up in so many big spots in 08, and he gets the base hit, and you win it in the bottom of the ninth. And then exactly. to celebrate July 4th, and the fireworks are going off, right? Right. I remember, I, I, I remember the game, uh, winning this game, and I remember a lot about it. You know, like I, I didn't, I, I, but I didn't remember the fact that, you know, why that we – was that what did we put half in a rotation or, or that was just a spot start for him? I, yeah. you know, like that's that's the only thing that I don't remember about the game, really. I can remember, I can, I can kind of see the Met, Mets guys uh, getting getting their hits and also walking. And, there, you know, like it was, it was a game where we, that we were really in and, yeah. and we stayed and fought and we uh, come out on top at the end. So you know, came out on top of the end, which you did more often than not in 2008, right. uh, which is what made it so special. Uh, and you can't say enough, really, about the bullpen. I mean, we all know what Brad Lidge did in 08, but man, you had so many guys. Right. When you talk about the Durbs, Durbins and the Madsons and the Romero and, and uh, so many guys that just consistently gave you exactly what you needed out of the bullpen, right? Exactly. You know, uh, you know, Murph, for uh, when our uh, when our bullpen would, would hold us, especially early, when uh, when we started using our bullpen, at, you know, like say in the sixth inning, things like that, uh, when they were doing a good job of, of just holding us right there and keeping us where we was at. If you remember the games that we've talked about before, same way, you know, like yeah. they held them there and we caught up and got them, you know, yep. and, and, exactly and right. We played. Giving your, giving your offense a chance to win the game late. That's what your bullpen was able to do. Well, you won this one, and uh, things started to change in July. You started uh, clicking a little bit and playing some better baseball. We're going to check in on some more of those games down the line. But, Charlie Manuel, always good to have you here and uh, reliving the 2008 season. Thanks, Charlie. All right. Thanks, Murph. Glove Stories with Murph is presented by Parks Casino Sportsbook app. New users download an app store or click parkscasino.com slash PA and use the promo code MONEY for first bet risk-free up to $500. Must be 21. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. And welcome back to Glove Stories with Murph, presented by Parks Casino Sportsbook app. And really happy to welcome in my good friend and from NBC Sports Philadelphia, the beat writer for the Philadelphia Phillies, Jim Salisbury is with us. Jim, good to see you. Thanks for being with us. Oh, good to see you, Murph. Thanks for having me. Yeah, you got it. Let's talk a little bit about this team who uh, continues to kind of just play that 500 level baseball. There are a couple games above 500 when you and I are talking right now, but uh, you know, injuries have been a big part of it. Um, you know, they've had some guys that have been dinged up, uh, but they're getting a couple guys back as well. So uh, talk a little bit about the the roster situation as it sits right now. Yeah, I think the injuries have been one of the kind of underlying themes uh, that they've had to overcome early um you know harper missed a little bit of time didn't go on the il but you know ray Mudo missed a little bit of time didn't go on the il i mean those are two big signature guys um uh you know roman quinn's been on the il and and one of the big losses i think has been archie bradley he was uh, your number one pickup in the bullpen obviously we know the trouble the bullpen had last year they went out and spent six six million on archie bradley and uh I think it was uh, mid-April, he goes on the DL or the IL with an oblique. He actually comes back for the start of this homestand. Uh, and that's going to be, I think, a big boost to the bullpen, uh, giving Joe another option late in the game. They thought enough about him to make him their number one signing in the bullpen. Yeah. And uh, now it's time to show it, you know? Absolutely. And it stretches out that bullpen a little bit. It allows them to have a little bit more depth. Hopefully, it's uh, it's what they need. D.D. Gregorius also headed to the I.L. to get that elbow uh, right. So that's a big loss for them, although Nick Maton has been playing pretty well for them, which has been a good story. But let me ask you this about the offense, because offensively, this team has not got it, gotten it together so far this year. In fact, nobody's really been hot with anybody else, it seems like. One guy here, one guy there. But that's across baseball. When you look at the numbers across baseball – you know, offense production, offensive production is so far down. 
where do you see out of this Phillies team? Because we thought they were going to score some runs. We did. I mean, last year they were tied for fifth in the majors in runs per game. And I think we all liked the offense, especially when they brought back JT Romuto. Um, but it sputtered most of the season. I mean, they're hitting like right at the league average, which mm-hmm. I think is unbelievably low. It's like 236. Yep. Uh, but what I see is very, very spotty production with runners in scoring position and way too many strikeouts. Uh, they stressed making more contact in spring training. Uh, cutting down on the strikeouts, and they just haven't done that. They lead the league in strikeouts over 10 per game. Uh, and that's just a recipe to have an inconsistent offense. And that's really what we're seeing is uh, the, one, of the, one of the big things that plagues this team is performance on the road, the injuries, uh, and the strikeouts leading to an inconsistent offense have really hurt the team. Yeah, and it's been that same story for the last couple of years. And the defense. Uh, in the defense, yeah. I have to point out here on gl- on yeah. glove story, uh, they, <laughs> right, haven't been, not- they, they haven't been very uh, loving with the gloves either. I mean, not. you know, for, for six weeks, you know, I've watched a lot of baseball. I have never seen a worse defensive stretch than this team has had, and they need to clean that up. I mean, they're 21 and 20. That's good, but uh, with the, with the especially good with the defense you played, the spotty offense, the injuries, and uh, – you know, and inconsistency, inconsistency at the back end of the uh, rotation. Yeah, and and that leads me to my final question because uh, I think the manager was starting to really feel that frustration about his defense over the past week, and I know that uh, he was asked about it by you and, and and some of your colleagues about the altercation with he and Segura in the dugout, and you know, it, it to me it was just a bunch of frustration on both sides, kind of bubbling over. Who knows? Maybe it'll it'll help kickstart this team, but it, it's something that needed to be addressed for sure. Yeah, um, I think if Joe were willing to talk about it, he might say that he wished he reacted maybe a little bit differently in the moment. But I understand uh, it was kind of knee jerk. It was kind of from the gut. It was visceral. I mean, they were awful on defense the night before and uh, on Saturday night. And then they open up Sunday's game with an error in the first inning. And uh, it's kind of the undoing of the, of the entire game. So I understand where his frustration ca- came from. Uh, he lashed out. Those things happen. Uh, but, you know, they open up this homestand here today and Segura actually, uh, Chatted a little bit with the writers. Uh, first time we've had any face-to-face contact in more than a year. Oh, great. And uh, he, he, yeah, he was all smiles and said, uh, it's in the past. We love each other. They hatched it out. They cleared the air. <laughs> and, uh, you know, these are grown men. There's a lot of testosterone. They're very competitive. Guys are going to react. And then, you know what? The next day, my, my experience is the next day, it's always gone. It yep. just moves on because it's nature of sports. Nature of sports, nature, and, and the nature of this particular game, baseball, because it is every single day. Yeah. Uh, for this six months. Jim Salisbury, always great to talk to you from NBC Sports Philadelphia. Uh, We love your coverage, and we appreciate you jumping on uh, Glove Stories for a couple minutes. Thanks, Murph. Glove Stories with Murph is presented by Parks Casino Sportsbook app and is a production of SBC Media Partners. The engineer for Glove Stories is Chad Evans. Cindy Webster is our marketing and guest relations director, and our executive producer is Roger Haddon. Whether you are watching us on YouTube or downloading the podcast from one of our major podcast providers like Apple, Google, or Spotify, make sure to hit like and subscribe so that we can let you know when a new episode of Glove Stories is available. We'll release new episodes weekly throughout the 2021 Major League Baseball season.